with no way up and I needed some help everybody breathing but not living just existing well and I needed some help somebody told me that Jesus will set you free What he did for me The Lord is The Lord is Ooh. He took all My fears away He is And my salvation Anybody know Hello, welcome to day two of our 104th church anniversary celebration, a shining light in a dark world. And today, if you're tuning in right now, here's what we want you to do. We want you to subscribe, like, and follow on our three platforms, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. It's so important as we do ministry at Shiloh that we reach everybody. So we want you to tune in again, like, subscribe, and follow Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So today I have the pleasure of introducing some of the ministry leaders and the work we're doing here at Shiloh Baptist Church. So without further ado, I'm going to have my wife talk about the youth ministry. We have had the privilege as, as youth pastors of ministering to the young children all the way up to the oldest. And in doing that, we have developed so many ministries. There's too many to even name. We've had Bible studies. We've had ministries where we call to meet the needs of those that weren't attending services. We've had Sunday morning services for Kingdom Kids Ministry. We've had concerts and so forth. So now I'm going to let you take a look at some of the activities that we've done over the years. Come on everybody, put your hands together. It's got to get better. All over the world, listen to these words. People come. People go. People go. Your life has been, Your life has been out, of control. out of control. You're confused. You're confused. But don't worry. Don't worry. Your song it will get better. It's gotta get better. It will get better. It's gonna be better. It will get better. Cause God, God is in control. control. Hello, welcome back to the 104th Church Anniversary Celebration. Hopefully you enjoyed that, that video of the youth ministry activities. Uh, again, we're excited here at Shiloh Baptist Church. If you're tuning in right now, we, here's what we want you to do. We want you to like, subscribe, and follow on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. It's so important, again, as I said, in terms of ministry, what we do here at Shiloh Baptist Church. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the youth ministry. Uh, being the youth pastor here at Shiloh, it's been a blessing for me to, to, to help further along these young people in their lives and, 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 and building them up spiritually. And one of the things we talk about here is our, our mission, what we, what we do in our youth ministry. And our, our scripture that we use is Jeremiah 29 and 11. And it says, I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. And we want that to be in every young person's life. We want them to know they have purpose, promise, and power for their life. And we have the three Ds that we go by. Discover, develop, and defend. We want our young people to discover their faith. We want them to develop their faith. And finally, in the end, we want them to be able to defend their faith. So here at Shiloh Baptist Church, we believe in the Word of God. We believe in ministering the Word of God. So again, we just thank you from the bottom of my hearts for tuning in to the ministry and to what we do here at Shiloh Baptist Church and again, God bless you, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of the day. Praise the Lord. Hi again, my name is Deaconess Valerie Cross, and I'm joined for this segment with our ministers of music. Why don't the two of you introduce yourselves? I'm Floyd Murray. I'm Minister Dion Cole. Praise the Lord. We're so happy to have you here with us today. And what I want to talk to you about, again, is this 104 
years of service to our community, our membership, and that is Shiloh Baptist Church. So with that, I want to pose a question to the both of you, and I want to ask you how long you've been a part of our ministry, and what drew you to the ministry. Um, why don't we start with you, um, Dion? Well, I've been a part of Shiloh Baptist Ministry for about 20 years now. Um, I can recall uh, back in the day, you know, um, I was around 1920 at the time, uh, coming back home from college, uh, needed a place to, you know, go and worship. Um, at the time, I believe um, it was around the time where the church actually, um, we had one church in two locations. That, that vision kind of came to pass. So at the time, we were at, uh, we were on Landis Avenue um, by the Ramada, and there was Miss Paula. She was there, and she needed some assistance to come and, uh, and assist her with the ministry. So I was kind of just in, in, the, in that lane to kind of just help her play the music. And that was kind of my role. That's how I started out, you know, so. Okay. Great. And Minister Myrie? All right. Well, I've been around Shiloh for a long time. I don't remember the number, but I've been here for a long time around helping out. And when I came to Shiloh, um, actually, I, was, I came broken. I was going through some stuff uh, hurt by the church, a church that I was at. And I would come to this service over at the Landis High School, I think it was. And uh, Pastor Douglas, every Sunday I would come, Pastor Douglas would preach this sermon, and it seemed like it was just for me. And that drew me to become a member of Shiloh. And I remember one other thing, Mom Duncan, as I was calling Mom, my sister Duncan said, you belong with us. And I was like, yeah, really, okay. And then that really did happen. So I, I'm glad to be here to be a part of this great ministry. Praise the Lord. So also in previous conversations, we've been talking about how the COVID-19 um, pandemic has impacted ministries and not just here locally but all across the world and with the two of you being in music ministry let me ask you how do you see this moving forward as far as music ministry goes do you see us going back to you know the, the large choirs eventually or do you think that we're going to have to shift and do something a little bit different why don't we start with you well right now we're in the shift uh, we've broken down our music ministry as far as a smaller praise team and eventually we'll get back to where we were but right now we're just taking it step by step and as we go so nobody you know understand that we're just doing things correctly and it's healthy for everybody to be around okay. and your thoughts? Um, in my opinion i think um ministry um to me, you know, I think this will become the kind of the norm, you know, so it's about, and it's about being able to adapt to your environment. Uh, of course, uh, people with different health issues, we have to have them in mind as well. So um, I don't know, I, I think this will be kind of like our, nor our normal, uh, in a sense of uh, as far as how we do ministry, but you know, it's about just uh, adapting to the change and being able to just move forward from there. And I know we have a number of different um, ministries as far as the choir goes. I know we have the, the young people and there are some other, um, I guess, units that we have. Can you guys tell us what they are and what the role is of those different singing units that we have here at Shiloh? Well, first Sunday we have our men of worship. That's our men of the church. And then on second Sunday, who we have, Dion? We have the youth choir. All right. And then the third Sunday we have True Worship. Okay. And who we have on the fourth Sunday? And the fourth Sunday we have our mass choir. But as you know, with the cold COVID yeah. um, thing going on, we've been doing our, our praise teams right now. But in a normal uh, circumstance, that's our format. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Bishop mentioned True Worship. Um, this is our young adult choir uh, between the ages of 18 and, and 40. Um, I noticed that, you know, statistically showing uh, that age group has been missing from a lot of churches and, you know, uh, statistically showing that's the reason why, you know, a lot of churches die because they miss out on that age group. They uh, fail to, you know, uh, do things for that age group. And, you know, these are our leaders. These are the people that's going to be running the church, you know. So, um, you know, like I said, when I came here 20 years ago, 
Uh, you know, you guys were at the time, you know, young, and you guys are still young. <laughs> still young. But you know, Thank you. <laughs> but, but even at that, you know, you guys were still leading. You were in leading positions. Uh, Sister Makima, Brother Sean, they were all in leading positions. So it's my job to kind of, you know, teach this age group and you know to let them know that you know you guys are our future. So it's very important that we keep them involved with the ministry. Amen. And just. Um I guess piggybacking off of something you just said, you got you guys named all of our different singing units, and one of those was the youth choir. And could you tell our audience maybe what can we do to keep them engaged? Right now you talked about the true worship in 18 to 40, but coming right behind them are our younger people and what can we do to engage them at this moment in time? Any thoughts? Well, I, I, I really think that our youth church is very effective trying to lead them and direct them to be more a part of the service. Mm -hmm. And even at times we do have them do like scripture or prayer at some uh, service that we have. So I think we're on the right road with that, with our youth pastors. They're doing an awesome job with that and leading them and directing them. I concur. And what about with singing, singing, as far as the choirs go? Well, do we you are, see them? Yes, I do okay. see that eventually, because um, we are one church in two locations, so both churches have youth choirs. And now you're one of the youth choir directors, aren't you? Yes. Yes. I'm asking you questions now. <laughs> but um, we're 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 focused on our youth. You know, don't want to leave them lost out. Okay. So I think the message from our ministry, as far as Shiloh goes. We want to make sure that we're touching every segment, whether young or older. Our intent, even in the midst of this pandemic, is to make sure that we're inclusive and that we're including everyone in our ministry. Thank God for the leadership of our pastor and first lady, uh, where we're, we're kind of not forced, but we're encouraged to make sure that we're thinking outside of the box and that we're keeping everyone involved. So. Thank all of you for listening to us, and thank you, Minister Colvin and Minister Myrie, for joining me um, this afternoon. God bless you. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're back, and guys, I'm so good to be with my two, my host and my two co-hosts. They've done a fantastic job, uh, but this is a very important segment of our programming today. I need you to know, Shiloh Baptist Church has always prioritize Jesus' statement of reaching out and making sure that we are taking care of our community. You can't be a light shining in a dark world if the people around you are hungry, or have needs, and you don't try to meet them. So right now, we're gonna take this section to give you, to make you intimate, give you some little information about our Community Development Corporation, which is entitled Beyond the Walls. So appropriate, because we believe the church not only exists within the walls, shouting, praising, worshiping, you know, giving the word. We do that well. But the other thing Jesus said, you can't be the church if you don't also have an outreach to make sure you're meeting that. So at this time, there's a scripture um, that our uh, CDC is based on. One of the scriptures, part of our mission statement. I'm going to ask if uh, one of our youth pastors, McKeema Douglas, would kind of read that scripture so we can, you know, kind of de de deal into, de what do we call it? Um, deal with it. But first John chapter 3 verse 17 says if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need and has no pity on them how can the love of God be in that person? Wow did you hear? That's the text I mean you can't just shout ask people for offerings and then not give anything back so we make sure that this is one of the most important programs in the structure of Shiloh Baptist Church. Uh, I did say our director, Sharon Dobbins, uh, I have a minister, Pastor Ron McBride, and we have other ones who come every week and do these programs and sacrifice. So I've asked them to look at our brochure so we can give you the correct details. So I'm going to ask first if uh, Valerie Cross would kind of tell, let us know. Um, well, you know what, let me start with our youth pastor because he has the mission statement. I'd like you to actually read the mission statement and talk about the two programs, two of the programs as part of our program. Sure, Pastor. Um, the mission statement 
for the for Behind the Wall CDC says, it is our mission to support our community by helping people develop better lives through partnerships, collaboration, education, and activities that lead to self-sufficiency and economic stability. Wow, that's a powerful mission statement. And to go along with that, Pastor, uh, we talk about the food pantry is one of the main things that we do here at Shiloh Baptist Church through the CDC. Uh, it is very important. Every third Saturday of the month in our violent location from 10 to 12, we provide uh, food for people who are in need, people who are struggling, money may be tight, bills are funny, and you need a little extra to help you get you through through the month. Well, we have a food pantry that helps you every third Saturday in violent. And then on the fourth Saturday, we're in Port Norris, and we're doing the same thing, providing food from 10 to 12 for families that are in need. So if you need help, you need assistance, please reach out to our CDC and we'll be more than help, more than glad to help you in any way we can, especially when we're talking about giving food uh, to people who are hungry. But also with that, we have another program called Family Strengthening Network. Family Strength and where we are advocates for, for families in the communities who may be struggling um, economically, um, they may be struggling with, with, a, with a child in school and they need extra help. Uh, so we provide assistance for those for families in the community where we have a family advocate who will help you develop a plan with you to help your family, whether you're trying to buy a house or whether you're trying to get your bills right or whether you have a child struggling in the school and need homework assistance. She is there or he is there to help you and advocate for you in the community, in the school, um, with, within the whatever we can do to help in that vein, we're there to help. All right, and, and I, I'm not going to start naming names. I just will say that Donna Colvin is our director down here, and I, she has several co-directors. Please, guys, don't don't take that to my heart. We're going to make sure you guys are in the credit. But we have so many selfless volunteers who come down. Uh, I, I'm, I, as a pastor, one day I said, I need extra people to come to the pantry. And one of my directors said, no, we have enough. We have enough. Think about that. There are people out there that believe in what we're doing. Val, you have uh, some of the bulk of the programs that we have left in our program. Just kind of highlight those programs for the people so they'll know what areas we're reaching in the community with. Sure, Pastor. And one of the things that I want to say is that I'm proud to be a part of a church where we're actually reaching beyond the four walls that we worship in. And we're actually touching um, our communities um, that are around in Cumberland County and even beyond. So with that, one of the programs that we have is called Celebrate Recovery. Wow. And Celebrate Recovery um, helps people that are dealing with um, addictive behaviors such as drugs, alcohol, but even beyond that, it could be um, you're dealing with maybe overeating or a sexual addiction. Whatever it is, we invite you to come out on Friday evenings at 6.30 p.m. at our violent location to get the help that you need. You can talk to others that are also there with you, and there is a Bible-based focus on helping you to recover from those addictive behaviors. And Sober Recovery is a nationally syndicated program, and I'm very proud that we had some people that went and got licensed, and they've been effective doing this for the last two and a half years, so it's a big part of helping in our community. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. And then we also have our summer youth enrichment program. And me as a parent, I've actually taken um, advantage of this program as well. And what it does is while your children are home um, out of school during the summer, it gives them something to do socially, um, building um, skills um, and talking to others and just fellowshipping with kids that are their own age. I believe the age group is from 7 to 13 years old. And it's not only about their social development, but just so that they don't lose what they learned in the school year, there's also opportunities for them to continue their learning as far as academically. So we're definitely happy about that and we're proud to be able to offer those services. And, and that program, uh, I won't do a commentary on each one, but that program, I gotta shout out because my wife has diligently been the director uh, of that program as long as it's been going. And I'm very, very intimate with that program because she brings me in every year and makes me do something. So I thank God for her and the diligence uh, she puts forth for that summer program. And then we have our Code Blue. And for Code Blue, I do want to read a portion of what that is about because I think it's very important to highlight what we're doing, um, especially with the winter upon us and 
looking down the road to some freezing temperatures. So what it says about Code Blue is that Code Blue are warming centers throughout Cumberland County and it's open when the temperatures are freezing and considered extremely dangerous for those without shelter. And that's important, not only do we provide shelter and we have volunteers in our, right, in our congregation, but we also provide warm meals to those that do come in and take advantage of the Code Blue program. And I know that we have people here that actually have been a part of that and volunteer to help out with that. And then we also, lastly, we have um, strategic alliances. And this is where we build, um, I guess, uh, relationships with those that are out in the community. And just to name a few, there's um, Century Bank, um, Rutgers Reading Program, USDA Summer Food Program, and then we also have Community Food Bank of New Jersey and Easter Seals. So again, with that, I can say that we are definitely proud to be a part of a ministry that reaches beyond the walls. So, so we're not, uh, we're telling you this, because as we said, it's a part of our rich history. We've always done it. But we also want you to know that um, we as a church will leave in this program to the point that we don't just talk about it, we put our money. We made a pledge years ago to actually tithe 10% of our gross, our annual gross income into our community projects. And to that, I want to say I'm proud. And so that's what Shiloh is about. Again, subscribe, join us, help us get this out to everyone. And thank you guys for being a part of this section with me. And to all of my um, uh, works, who, those who work in Beyond the Walls, as I said, I love you, I thank you, and I'm so proud to be your pastor with the work that you do. God bless you. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.